Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, a very exciting video today. Up today, we are finally installing a boost gauge on the Monday. I've wanted to do this for a little while now. I've gone away and done a bit more research, found good ways of getting the vacuum pipe into the car. And so hopefully by the end of this video, this will be in the Mondeo. So let me just show you all the kit we've got to work with today. I ordered this boost gauge off eBay. It was around 15 pounds. It's a 35 PSI boost gauge. It came with a little bit of tubing in it, but I don't need that, so I'll put that to the side. I also, in this box, I have a plastic surround that is gonna fit in the driver's side air vent. Um, that was what the boost gauge is gonna go into. And then here I have some boost pipe. I think there's about three meters here of vacuum hose and a few little cable ties as well. Now on the Monday, it's already had a boost gauge fitted once upon a time, and there's already a place on the EGR delete for the vacuum hose to run off. Now the previous owner had the hose running from the EGR delete across the car to the passenger side through a grommet, and then it must have wormed its way somehow into the driver's side. Now I'm not gonna do that today. I don't wanna have to route it all the way to the passenger side and then go all the way back through the dash and get it to come to the driver's side. So I'm gonna try and find a better place to get it to come through the car. I think I've got a good idea of where I'm gonna run it, but first of all, take a few things apart and make sure that my idea is gonna work. Now, in the engine bay of the Mondeo, I don't know if you can see, this is where the EGR usually lives, um, and it's had an EGR delete, so this pipe has deleted the EGR, and on the side of it, just here, there's like a little nipple that comes off, and at the minute there's a piece of tubing on it with a bolt in the piece of tubing, so it's been blocked off, so you don't have a boost leak. Now this is designed to be here to run a boost gauge off, so I'm gonna be using this, and then from what I can tell, it was run some way over the engine bay to the passenger side, and if I open the door, if I unlock the door, now if I open the door, you can see um, above the wiring, there's a rubber grommet, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there, there's like a hole in it just there, you see. So that was fed in there, obviously came into the passenger footwell somewhere, and then was put across. I don't know where he had the boost gauge before, but I really don't fancy routing the hose all the way over here through, and then having to go under all the dash and stuff, because under there, there's not really a lot of access to get anywhere, so if I can, I wanna get my vacuum hose through on the driver's side. Now I have been looking on this side of the engine bay to see if I can find any rubber grommets or anything that the uh, wires could go through. There is something there, which I think is the clutch cable. That's got a rubber grommet on it. I was thinking possibly there, but I think if I take this cowling off where the windscreen wipers are, inside there, you probably won't be able to see very well through this. There seems to be a wire that goes into the engine bay there. So if I remove all of this, I'm thinking I might be able to get in and feed it through there somehow. I'm thinking I can route it from here, up the side of the engine, through this rubber grommet here where this wiring goes through. Let me just load up for you. Through that grommet there, um, along, and then into something at the top there, into the car. So that is the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take all this cowling off, the windscreen wipers have gotta come off, the plastic cowling, and then I'm gonna have a better look behind there and see if I can find somewhere that this can go through. So already the windscreen wipers are proving to be a little bit of a pain. Um, I kind of figured this always seems to happen. They seem to rust on. So I've hit them with a little WD-40. I'm gonna let them soak for a few minutes. And then just try and keep wiggling them. I hope this doesn't stop me in my tracks already today. So after a few minutes and a good old wrestle with the wipers, I've managed to get one of them off. Uh, the driver's side one is now off, but this one, is being a real stubborn little bug and it doesn't want to come off. I think this one got loose because of the WD, so I'm hoping that if I leave this one a bit longer, that might come off as well. But I'm also thinking I might not even need to take this one off because if I remove these screws, this trim is already quite loose. I'm thinking it might just come up and sort of swivel around, sort of like a little uh, clock motion to the side because I only need to get right there, just behind that. So I might not even need to take this one off because this thing is in two parts as well. So I'm gonna try taking out these screws. There's like a few torque screws, one here, one here, and one in the middle. I'm gonna take those three out and see if I can just move this out of the way enough to get in there. Well, it's actually really disappointing. From what I can see, I can lift it up a little bit, as you can see in there. That's the windscreen wiper motor. Um, I thought that there was a wire that goes in behind it. However, from what I can see from here, I don't think there is. And even if there is, I'd need to take out the windscreen wiper motor to get to it. Um, and with that wiper being stuck on there, that ain't gonna happen. So 
I think I'm gonna have to go to plan B. So I've managed to put everything back together. I've got the windscreen wiper and everything back on. Um, I've been looking for the past five minutes and I'm really struggling to find anywhere apart from that grommet where the previous owner went through um, to find anywhere to put the vacuum hose through. The trouble with this engine bay is it is so compact, especially at the back there, that you can't even basically see the firewall. So being able to get your hands in there and actually feed a pipe through is like next to impossible. I can see why they went through the passenger side because it's so it's like the easiest most obvious place but it just means you have to run the pipe all the way over there and all the way through the dash which i really don't want to do so at this point i'm kind of a little bit stuck i don't really know what to do or what the best move is now like i said i've been searching for the past five minutes trying to find somewhere decent to put it through and and for the life of me i just can't find a decent place to put it through so i'm going to bring the camera back if i find anywhere else otherwise looks like we're going through the passenger side So we're actually going to give up on the boost gauge install for today. I am now on my way to Wilco though, I'm in the Astro as you can see, um, because I'm going to get some power steering fluid for the Mondeo, as you know it all leaked out in my last video. And I'm also going to get some, and I'm also going to pick up some rubber grommets, because I've thought of a, because I've thought of a better way to feed the vacuum line into the car, um, and we'll carry that on tomorrow. There we go, that's the stuff for the Mondeo, she'll be happy when that's topped up. Do you know what? It's so nice to have a second car, like a spare car, to be able to go out and do sort of part runs and stuff. Usually, when if you're working on your car and you need something, you need to ask someone for a lift or something. But me, two cars is always the best way. My dad's the same, he's got a spare car. So if he needs it, he can use it, and it always comes in handy. Right, I got my munch. I'm gonna quickly go and fill up the power steering. I'll, I'll show you what I guess. I'll show you me filling that up, but I'm literally just gonna be pouring the fluid in the reservoir, and um, just give the wheel a few turns just so it all goes through. Uh, and that's kind of it. I do want to flush the fluid at some point. Like a bunch of people said, uh, the fluid was really dark. So I will be doing it at some point, just not quite yet. I just want to top it up. And then what I'll do is I'll come out here in the morning tomorrow um, and try and fit the boost gauge properly this time. Right, welcome back. Day two, God, that's bright. Right, it's day two of attempting to fit a boost gauge on the Mondeo. As you know, I filled up the power steering fluid. It got dark, so we called yesterday a day. I went on some Facebook pages for Mark III owners, asked a few people if they're fit a boost gauge, and if they have, where they ended up running the vacuum line. I had a reply from a guy called Anthony. Not clear if he watches the videos or not, but if he does, shout out to you, Anthony, for giving me the advice of where to put it. Now, he has said to remove the glove box on the passenger side, and behind there should be a rubber grommet with some wiring coming through, and he said that that is where he put his vacuum line through the car. So, it is still gonna be on the passenger side, which I was trying to avoid, but it looks like that is our best option. So I'm gonna go get the car back in the drive, take the glove box out and see if we can find this rubber grommet with the wiring coming through that Anthony was talking about. Apparently it snowed last night as well. We are supposed to have really heavy snow, but this is about as good as we got right there. And it's all melted. All right, so I've managed to remove the glove box. Super easy to come out. There was no screws or anything. It sort of just pulls out. Um, these little tabs are the only thing that really holds it in right here. You just have to push the plastic in and that comes out. Anyway, now that that's out, if I grab my phone with a torch, I think that, um, hang on, that harness right there, you see that, is what the guy was talking about. Um, it does have a large rubber grommet around it so I'm thinking that that is probably the way to go. So I'm gonna find where that is in the engine bay and see if it's easy to get to. So from this side, <laughs> the access is really limited. You know, we were around this area and everything is so tightly packed. I think the only way I'm gonna get down there is if I remove the air box. The whole air box is probably gonna to have to come out. I don't think it's too difficult. I think it's just that one Jubilee clip off the pipe that I fitted. And this should pop out and I should be able to get access then under this brake servo, because that's where I think the wiring harness goes in, is just under there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and see if it gives me a bit better access. 
Right, let me quickly catch you up. I feel like this video has been really messy so far. I don't feel like I've been productive or anything so far. However, I've changed my mind once again. I'm rooting the vacuum line through the original place that the previous owner had it in, through that grommet in the passenger side door. It seems to be like the easiest place to get to, um, and I've already ran the line from the EGR valve. As you can see, it's plumbed onto there. I'm gonna route it some way, cable tie it all up. Um, up here, I've got it to go through just under here. I'm gonna make sure that the pipe is out of the way of all the hinges and stuff, so don't worry about that. And then, I've got it to come in there. And obviously here I'll cable tie it to there as well. I'm gonna get it to come in this grommet, and then I'm just measured up to see if I've got enough to go along. And then I'm gonna make it go under here somewhere, across to the driver's side, and then into the boost gauge on that side. That is the way I'm gonna do it. I've committed, the pipe is halfway fitted. Let's carry on. Right, let me just give you another quick little update. Um, I have got the vacuum pipe ran from the EGR delete all the way through the car, all the way to the turbo boost gauge right here. I've got it just sitting there at the minute. This is about where it's gonna be. It's gonna be situated in the vent here. Now, I've got it plumbed up. As you can see, the vacuum line is on the back of it. So what I thought I'd do to test the boost gauge itself start the car up, give it a few revs, and just see if the needle actually moves. Um, the wiring, I believe, is just for the lights, just to, so that it lights up. Um, this is like a vacuum operated boost gauge, so it should work without having to wire it up. So if I can find my keys, I'll give it a start up, and we'll see if anything happens. Where are my keys gone? All right, this is a genuine first reaction. Haven't turned it on yet. Let's see if this thing works. Seems to do the trick. I forgot that I took the intake off so the math sensor wasn't plugged in or anything, so hope I haven't caused any myself any more codes. It was only running for a minute. But that shows that the boost gauge is working. Um, for some reason at idle it does this, like wobbles. I don't know if that's like something to do with the gauge or whatever. But it works, so now I need to properly fit it. There is one more modification I need to do to this. I ordered one of these uh, like boost gauge holders and it's supposed to fit in this vent here. Now, unfortunately, it's not a straight fit. As with all of these things that you buy cheap online, um, it has got to be modified. I've got to drill a couple of holes in the sides, one here, one there. Because if you look where it's gonna sit, right here, little tab thing, and there's one on the other side as well. Um, so this doesn't sit flush in there with those holes there. So I need to drill a couple of holes in the side of this. That should sit in there. Boost gauge will go in that. And then the only thing left to do is to tidy things up, so tidy up the wiring, cable tie it all to the side, um, and then wire up the actual lights on the boost gauge. So I need to find a live, which I'll probably go, um, I'll probably wire it into one of the uh, lights somewhere. I don't really know which one. Maybe the cigarette lighter will work. I'll find somewhere where I can wire the thing in, um, and then we can tidy things up, and that should be it. That should be the boost gauge installed. So after a little bit of filing, and a little bit of drilling, I've managed to get the um, housing to sit in there. It's not perfect, it does still move around a little bit, um, but it looks a lot better and it actually sits in there now. Once the boost gauge is situated, I think we'll be all right. I'm tempted to drill a hole through the bottom of it as well. I need a way of getting the vacuum pipe into the back of there somehow, so right where the lettering is there, I might just drill a hole just so I can poke the uh, vacuum line and the wiring through actually. I'm almost certain that fitting this boost gauge is like not meant to be, it's just not meant to happen. Someone in the world is telling me not to do it. Right. So as you know, I've just drilled the holes in this to get this to fit into the air vent. And upon fitting it in the air vent, the boost gauge doesn't even fit inside the air vent itself, like the stock air vent. This boost gauge doesn't even fit in there enough. Doesn't even go in, look how far it goes in. Doesn't even fit, this is too narrow here. The height there is too narrow. So what am I supposed to do? I'm honestly stuck. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <sighs> so there's one other option I have before I give up, but I don't know if I can bring myself to do it. As I've mentioned numerous times, uh, the previous owner had a boost gauge in here, but the setup that he had, it is really not my taste. This is 
what he had his boost gauge in. It's like a pod filter thing which you screw um, to like your dash or whatever. And he had it mounted right here. See where that vent is. Uh, the pipe would come up here, there's already a hole for it. And then that would sit sort of like that. And you'd have a boost gauge there. But I don't know if I like it. I think it looks tacky and it's like something you see on a race car. Um, and I quite like the dash being nice and simple and plain. So honestly, I don't think just just for the sake of having a boost gauge, I don't know if I can bring myself to use this. So today we have got another fail video. Even if everything goes wrong, I like to put these types of videos up because not everything goes right all of the time. I'm gonna leave the vacuum pipe where it is. I'll cable tie it up so it's all neat. So it's there for when I come up with a better solution. Um, I don't know if I need a smaller boost gauge. I don't know if I need a different trim piece. I don't know. A bit more research again is needed, which is kind of annoying, but this is how things go. I've never had a turbo car before. I've never fit a boost gauge before, so this is all kind of trial and error for me. You could argue that today wasn't a complete waste of time because we did get the vacuum line ran from the EGR delete, ran all the way to the driver's side. So we did accomplish something. Just need to find a better way to mount the boost gauge. If I sort of just give you a view here. Um, the reason I wanted it here because it's tidy. Um, if it was in that vent there, it would be so much tidier than having it sort of sticking up above the dash. I quite like a minimalistic dash, you know what I'm like. Um, so I don't want it to I don't want it to be too intrusive and there's not really anywhere else to go. There's so many buttons and stuff over here. There's nowhere to put it there. I don't know if I'm going to have to modify this vent even more um, just to get it to fit. I'm not sure. So if you enjoyed this video, regardless of it being a fail, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content. I hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless. I'll see you guys in the next one.